Okay, we'll be talking today about integrating the, the Simodon in, into your dental school curriculum. Um, first, I'll give a brief introduction, elaborate a little bit on what Olivia has already said um, about myself. I'll talk about how um, the Simodon was discovered for our use at the school and how that ultimately led to the creation of Promethean Dental Systems. I'm going to talk and address some questions about how this is supported by science and backed by research, which is something that I get a lot of comments and questions about. Um, we'll talk about how this is going to be you know, very important for the integration of the Simodont for a multimodal dental education, not just singular approach, which is what I think and how I think people learn best. Uh, and not to uh, overlook the assessment aspect of it. We'll talk about some of the expanding modules that we've we've been able to uh, develop and how this is continuing and will continue, uh, including additional instruments, uh, in increased haptics, which we've already uh, accomplished, and some advanced analytics, which, which uh, we haven't seen in the past. I want to show how it can be cost effective for dental schools and dental students and again uh, be elevating dental education as a whole with the accurate and objective assessment and advanced analytics. So I was a private dental practitioner for 17 years, had a successful private practice and then in 2000 went back to my alma mater to teach. Um, primarily I taught initially the business aspects of, of dental practice, uh, but I was involved in, in virtually all of the preclinical courses and ultimately covered in, in all clinical aspects. Um, we created a, as was uh, Olivia said, we created a department of general dentistry and I'll get into that in, in just a few minutes. Uh, while at school, I, I realized that just because you know um, something doesn't mean you can teach it. So I went back and, and got a master's degree in educational leadership and a doctorate degree in educational innovation, which helped my uh, ability to reach to the students and uh, teach them better. As was mentioned also, I'm the co-owner, co-founder and chairman of the board for Promethean Dental Systems. And, and as a disclaimer, yes, we, we, uh, <clears throat> it is a, an entrepreneurial effort and we, we do plan to um, expand that. And again, as a further disclosure, um, I'm not obviously getting paid to do this presentation. I was asked by Esther if, if I'd be willing to share some of my experiences and you know, who can turn Esther down. Of course, I said yes, and, and this is a great opportunity. I want to say that you know, I don't view myself as a, a, a total expert on this. There's aspects of the Simodon, the programming of it, that I have no clue. But I do want to share my experiences and, and, and have this be kind of an opening foyer, if you will, to all of us being able to interchange and exchange our, our ideas and experiences in the use of the Simodont Dental Trainer. <clears throat> Promethean Dental Systems, again, the goal is to elevate dental education through the use of technology, objective, accurate assessments, and advanced analytics. We've created a five-stage learning system, beginning with the pre-admissions. Um, and I think that that is a key aspect and a key component to what we're trying to accomplish. Of course, we've got courses and modules that have been created for dental school use, and that's what we'll be spending most of our time talking about today. We at Promethean Dental Systems have already conducted licensure examinations through a major testing agency and have been able to um, provide evidence that someone should be able to get a dental license, both the entire examination and giving portions of it which was a very exciting thing for us and very rewarding for the participants and those that were able to take advantage of it. We offer continuing education courses centered primarily around the use of the Simodon, um, <clears throat> and we have uh, professional remediation for dentists sanctioned by states for uh, remediation purposes. So, my discovery of, of the Simodont um, centered back to my days in education and again as chair of the Department of General Dentistry, uh, the last nine years of my um, educational career at, at the university. 
what I was noticing in, in our clinic, our general dentistry clinic, was the comprehensive care clinic for the senior class and only the senior class. And students had to actually do a certain number of procedures at a certain quality in order to matriculate into the senior clinic. And unfortunately, through the years, we were noticing that some students were getting to our clinic somehow, um, mystery to me, somehow with, without or lacking the requisite hand skills to be competent in the clinic. You know, the clinic was supposed to be a transition between dental school and private practice where they hone the skills, but some students were arriving without the necessary skills. So I got to thinking about it and wondering, well, you know, how, where's the problem at? What, how can we address this problem? And I decided it was probably at the admissions stage where we were accepting students that really weren't prepared for dental school. Surely they had the academics for it or they wouldn't have been considered, but we had no real good way of, of analyzing their hand skills or their ability to learn the hand skills. And I felt early on that, that the answer to this was going to be through the virtual haptic uh, technologies that were being developed. So I began years ago looking at all of the virtual haptic technologies that I could get my hands on. And at an IDEA annual IDEA meeting, I stopped and visited the Symbodont area, and within a few minutes, I realized that this was the technology that could do all that I wanted it to do and hopefully help with that admissions issue that I was talking about. I said at the onset that this was supported by science and backed by research. Um, I'm going to encourage everyone to go to our uh, website, PrometheanDentalSystems.com, where we have listed a number of research articles that throughout the years have been highlighting the development and advancement of this technology. But how is it backed by science? Well, learning science, if you go to Thad Polk's um, <clears throat> lecture series on the learning brain, he talks about skill acquisition and the three acquisition. The first being the cognitive, where you actually have to think about every move you make in the process. The associative, you know, applying deliberate practice where you specific corrective measures to improve what you're doing. And then ultimately through this direct uh, deliberate practice and time and practice, you these actions become autonomic. So you go through the cognitive, the associative, and an, auto, at an <clears throat> autonomic phase of skill acquisition. We go to Scott Young's book, Ultra Learning, and we read about three different types of feedback. We have the outcome feedback where you just get a, a score and it tells you, you know, how you scored relative to everyone else. You get informational feedback and it shows you, you know, as an example, you have an illustration that shows you where you made your mistake. And I think this is probably one of the biggest advantages of using the Simodon in, in an educational setting because it is really good at these two types of feedback. The outcome, it gives you a score, shows, tells you how you perform. Informational, it shows you where your errors were and how you can prevent, um, improve them. And then in corrective, the corrective is what the professor is supposed to be able to offer to the student. I can teach someone now. I don't have to spend my time defending the grades that they got, I can actually use my time teaching them how to improve their skills and show them ways to do that. And that is a huge, excuse me, a huge advantage. And that's offered by the Simodont trainer. I'm um, in the courses and, and modules and things that we develop. We try to use the modern learning principles highlighted in Benedict Carey's book, How We Learn. And I'm not going to go through each one of these individually, but I encourage everyone to take time uh, to investigate that publication and, and kind of get a feel for what we're talking about in the modern learning theory and how we're applying that <clears throat> in all that we're doing. These are some of the research articles through the years that have been um, published on the Simodon. And we can just read some of the titles to get an idea of, of the advancement this has made throughout the years and how it is supported actually by research in the use of the Simodont Dental Trainer. The first one listed is psychomotor skills gained from the Simodont transferred to reality 
on a mannequin. Number seven, Simidon results can distinguish between novice and experienced students. And I'll talk about that in just, just a bit. We have the pilot qualitative study using patient-centered training module. <clears throat> patient virtual models can allow dentists and students to practice specific procedures on Simidon before treating patients. And we'll show an example of that. And the Simidon exercises simulating caries removal can distinguish between novice and experienced performance. Again, I encourage you to look these articles and, and investigate for yourself. So it took about two years for us to actually acquire a Simidon. It took that long to convince administration and to purchase one for our institution. Immediately, I began a study uh, with the pre-dental club of our main feeder school. Now, this school was about two hours away from the dental school, and I was able to enlist 20 students from that pre-dental club to come one hour a week for 10 weeks, make the two-hour drive back and forth to participate in the study. And what we did was we gave them blocks. We didn't use teeth at all. And the way I explained this to them is, is this is the game operation where you take the tweezers and you remove the body parts and if you, if you hit the outside, it buzzes. Well, this is operation for dentists. You take the handpiece and the drill and you remove the red and don't touch the green. Of course, the green has sides and bottom and depth to it. So we used five different blocks in this study, the channel, the X, the circle, the inverted uh, X, and the inverted circle. And let me take just a, a moment here to let everyone reflect a little bit for those of us that have gone to dental school. What difference would it have made in your dental school career, particularly early on, if you could have entered dental school with the knowledge and confidence that you had the hand skills to be successful, that you could accomplish this. You already have learned indirect vision and that was not going to be the challenge that it was. I can tell you from my experience that it would have saved me a number of sleepless nights early on, wondering if I was ever gonna accomplish this or be able to master indirect vision. So of course, when you're doing this, you're going to have a score. And if I go back to what I was talking about before, the scoring here is your outcome feedback. And you're going to, as, as you well know, if you've used this before, you're going to remove the target, which is the red, and that target score will go up. Anytime you touch the green, either on the bottom or sides called the leeway, your score is going to go down. And the container bottom, the way it's set up, at the container sides and bottom, are very unforgiving because it zeroes your score out immediately if you touch those. So here's an example of one where in my outcome feedback, I'm getting all of my target up to 95%. I've hit 11% of the leeway on the bottom and 3.4 on the sides. I can see exactly where I need to improve upon. So this is again, my outcome and my informational feedback. Now, as an instructor, I can go in and I can tell the person and teach the person and show the person how to improve their scores using better technique. We, over the time frame again, we tabulated the scores for the leeway bottom sides, container bottom sides, and, and charted the scores out over time for each of the five different blocks. We set an arbitrary number of 85 and marked those that were 85 or below, and then those that were below 80 to 70, and even those that were below that at 60. And we said, could this be the beginning of an idea of how to map, if you will, the progress of students, and also those that might need additional help prior to entering dental school? What we found in our study was that everyone improved. Every single student that came and practiced improved on their score. But what we also found was that they did not 
improve at the same rate, nor did they approve, um, improve to the same level. Not everyone reached the same ability in that period of time. So exactly as what we would have thought, there are people that learn at different rates, and there are people that achieve goals, and then there are, are those that plateau. We had students that after doing this for a while decided they didn't really like doing this and decided this that dentistry wasn't their career of choice. That's a win-win for everyone. So let's talk now about the integration of the Simodont into the curriculum. I call these secrets of success or for success. Every school needs to have a champion for this, for any type of technology that you bring in. There needs to be a champion, someone who sees the vision, someone who sees the value, is willing to put in the work and time to make this happen, to make it go through. Equally important is to have the administration behind you. Without that, as we well know, all of us, nothing's going to happen. You're not gonna even have access to the machine without the support of the administration. And the administration can also help as you try to implement this into your courses and as you try to convince other faculty to accept this. The faculty, of course, are going to probably be your biggest challenge. And what you have to do is be able to convince them that it's worth changing their courses, particularly the course directors. It's, well, it's, it's to advantage, to their advantage, if they do include this as a multimodal, not to replace anything, but it as an adjunct, adjunct to what you're already doing. You need to have a plan. You need to have your champion exercise that plan and make sure that it, it becomes a reality. And another thing is I'm very, very strong, if you would note the page on, on the, the research or, or the support for this from the educational standpoint, I believe that assessment drives learning. And you must include assessment aspect of this, which is what we've concentrated a lot of our efforts on. As we introduce this into schools, I like to start with the blocks. Uh, number one, it, it helps introduce the students to the technology, get them used to it. There is a learning curve. And number two, it gives them an idea of where their hand skills are currently. And also as they improve, it's, it's encouraging to them that they are improving and shows them a quantitative way of assessing that improvement. As, as a student advances, and we'll start working through some of these in this presentation, you can add additional modules when the student is ready and it's appropriate, and for the coursework that you're, you're doing. Logistically, I've not found too many institutions that, that can afford to have one of these for every student. So you need to work in a multimodal aspect and create rotation schedules between the different modalities that you're teaching with. I wanna reinforce the idea that I, that I just said that you need to include assessments. And not only do I believe that assessment drives learning, I have a saying that if it doesn't count, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, that seems to be the case and we need to work with that and encourage that and give students a means by which to grade or to assess their advancement. I'd like to also take this opportunity, as I said at the onset, to encourage a Simodont user community. We as users, we as developers, we need to work together and identify the areas that need to be advanced and the different unique ideas. You know, I, I am not the expert on this per se. There are many experts are already included in this, in this uh, webinar and you have great ideas. We all have ideas that we need to share and work with each other uh, to further the advancement of this technology. And I encourage all of us to, to communicate and to continue with that. So let's say that we wanted to teach a student a class two preparation. Now I understand that you know this may not fit into your curriculum, but in, in your teachings, but this concept can be used for virtually any preparation that you want to use it for. So a student would practice on this block, become proficient to the level that you decide, and then they could move on to something like this. And this is in development. You could 
picture this tooth as being in an arch and being in a position that limits the mobility as it would in the mouth. The student would be working on this and in a similar manner, they would take, be taking the target and getting a score. There's your objective feedback. They would be looking at it and seeing where they needed to improve on the model to improve their score. There's your informational feedback. And then ultimately the professor could come in and guide them and show them how they can improve on what they're doing, they're, what they're doing and get corrective feedback. They would work on this however long they wanted to. And, and the key thing about this, as, as should be obvious, the instructor doesn't need to be there initially. They can be self-guided in their learning. And once they've achieved a certain level of competence in this, and again, determined by each institution what that would be, they can then move on to the next level. Same too, but no color. And now you see that they're getting the same type of scoring. They should have learned by now what the shape of that restoration is. So they need all they need to do now is perform that on this too. And they get a relative score based on what they've learned before. Only now they don't have the colors to guide them. They need to work on their own knowledge and what they've learned through the exercise. Totally objective, self-guided, and we need be corrective feedback from the instructor. It doesn't take much imagination to realize how this can be applied to so many different areas and things that we teach. Again, all the types of feedback we've talked about, practice as often as you want, as long as you want, and achieve the scores that you need to, to move forward. Those Many of those publications talked about the use of this in patient care. We can take a model such as this and practice, let's say I wanted to do six veneers. I could practice on this model as often as I need to prior to bringing that patient in and working. In fact, there's a, a company now um, called FirstFit, I think it is, that is using this type of concept where they prepare models and transfer it to a design center. They prepare the models, they create reduction guides, they design the restorations, and they fabricate the restorations where when the patient comes back in, they can use the reduction guides, prepare the teeth, and deliver the restorations in a single visit. That's just an example of, of where this technology is and where it's going and how important it will be as we're educating our students. The objective assessment and accurate assessment, totally objective. This is using the Plan Mecca uh, compare software where we've transferred the images and now we've overlaid the unprepared tooth on top of the prepared tooth and we can measure it, and we can slice it and give accurate down to the fourth decimal point millimeter wise, uh, far beyond what we need in our assessment of the preparations. What does this look like throughout the curriculum? Uh, the H1 and H2 I've got placed there so that we don't forget that hygiene is being developed. It's under development. And that's going to be an exciting addition to what is going to be offered through the Simodon. We have the pre-admissions, the pre-clinical, which will be, you know, many of the modules that we're developing uh, that we just showed you. We can use it for student remediation, which it already is. Patient preparation, the things that I just showed you using those models and much more as we as we continue to collaborate and, and develop the potential. We already talked about the licensing and I'll talk about that in just a minute again. Residency specialization, I'll show you something that can be do, done for that. And then continuing education and remediation. As, as Olivier said, the entire dental life cycle. So how do we get 
how was it made possible that we could deliver licensure examinations? Well, I have to admit that COVID had a role in that, that live patient examinations were not being permitted, so they had to come up with an option. And that option was, in, in many cases, the mannequin simulated. Well, we believe that the Simodont offers a superior uh, challenge and more lifelike, both in its visuals and in its haptic sensation. So in our licensure examination, the one that we were, we were fortunate to be able to provide, there's a restorative section and a prosthodontic section. If you look at the model there for the restorative, what you're looking at again is an overlay of an unprepared model, which would be the white, and the student's preparation. Now, what I like about this picture, among many things, is if you look at the speckled aspect of it, what that's telling me is that overlay is so exact that the technology can't even decide which one to show me, so it's shown me parts of both again, down to the fourth decimal point in millimeters. I can slice that any way I want to. I can measure that at any point and give accurate, very accurate, totally objective assessment. That can be done on the prosthodontic model as shown there. Another aspect of the examination is endo access opening. Think of the Simodont as a subtractive tool it's going to be able to be used for anything that removes structure, tooth structure at this point in time. So endo access opening can be evaluated because I'm removing tooth structure. And you can see how this may have looked you know, acceptable looking at over top, but clearly this is not an adequate endo access opening. One can just take this and imagine how this type of tech technology or use of the technology can be used in endodontic residency program and others as we continue to investigate. I believe this is very cost effective for dental schools and dental students. If you think about the cost of associated with remediating students, the time for faculty, the time for students, the cost for both students and the institution, Using this in a timely and productive manner can reduce and in some cases remove the costs associated with student remediation. You know, most schools I know, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, have faculty openings almost continually. And this can help reduce the cost of the simulation labs and teaching by reducing the, the number of hours faculty would be used or needed. You know, reducing the number of you know, simulation units you might use as you develop the rotational schedules we talked about. We know that it can lower the cost of board exams because we've done it. It can even potentially lower the amount of time taken uh, to provide board examinations. So through, again, going back to the Promethean guidelines, through the advanced educational and assessment technology we're, we're able to offer, those that are supported by science and, and backed by the research we've talked about and many more projects that are that are continuing to be um, placed and then put in action. I want to emphasize once again, the multimodal education. I believe that people learn best using multiple ways of learning the same types of things. And this fits very nicely into that. Underscore once again, the assessment and the need for assessment and all that we do. I think that the self-guided aspect of it is very important, where the students can learn and practice. And those that came to the school to, to practice from, from the feeder institution, it was a challenge, it was a game. They wanted to beat their scores and it was fun to watch their excitement as they kept trying to improve upon their efforts. That's the excitement we want as educators, correct? It can be very cost effective for the means I've just described. And once again, in closing, I'd just like to encourage us as users to communicate, to help to continue to develop the procedures, the instruments, and the analytics that will move this to its next horizon. Again, I thank you for the time.